So my name's Ellie Hurley from Nudge Marketing and I am the leading authority on chatbot marketing, messenger marketing. And I am with Prosper today on the online prosperity show where we're talking all things business growth and how you can actually move your business from where you are now to where you really want to be. It's all about fulfilling your business dreams and taking you to the top. Welcome to yet another exciting episode of the Online Prosperity Show. And today, I've brought you the chatbot queen herself, Ellie. Ellie, how are you doing, my love? I'm doing really well, thanks. Prosper, how are you going today? Thanks for having on, me having me on the show. Really, really, really excited because, I mean, if the viewers are watching this, this is actually a very important episode. Um, unless you've been living under a rock or stone at some point, in your life, the last couple of years in your news feeds or in the news, there's been a lot of talk about chatbots that are being delivered through Messenger on Facebook. Now, obviously, you might be confused as to what kind of animals they are or what sort of use are they for your business. And that's the reason why we've brought in Ellie so that she can give us the nuts and bolts of what these little robots can actually do for your business. Now, Ellie, I could go on and on talking about these little chatbots. I'll let you automate it for us. What exactly um, is it that you do, Ellie, at Nut Marketing? Okay, so what we actually do, Prosper, is we are a training company and also an agency for chatbots. So we teach people how they can use and integrate chatbots into their marketing strategy. And we also build chatbots for um, specific clients. With the, um, with the learning, we find that it's really important not just to understand the technology of it, but to also understand the, the strategy that goes behind it because this type of communication is like none other that we've seen before. It is a very specific conversational style of communication with um with your customers like we're getting into their in you know we're getting into their personal messenger so we need to treat that conversation as if we're talking to them almost like they're a friend but obviously we need to have the professional brand um or whatever our brand is so we personalize our bot so that it actually will portray your brand uh, nicely Absolutely. That's really, really fantastic there. But let's just draw the cat in a little bit, just in case some people don't quite understand what exactly a chatbot is. Would you just maybe put us on the straight and narrow as to what exactly is a chatbot? Sure. Okay. So a chatbot is a piece of software that you can then program and automate to respond to actions that people take when they're communicating with you in Messenger. Now, the, there's chatbots at the moment for Facebook Messenger, which are the most common ones out there. We use one called uh, ManyChat, which is M-A-N-Y-C-H-A-T. Um, you can start with them for, for zero dollars. They have a free account, so you can jump in there and start using it, and it costs you absolutely nothing. So for new businesses or businesses that are looking at a bootstrap market, it's a great way for them to get in there and to start playing with it. And then for as little as 10 bucks a month, US dollars, they can actually take all the branding off and it just opens up some other growth tools that they have an offer. So I guess essentially, as you called it, these little chatbot animals are just some software that you program, you tell it what you want it to do and how you want it to respond to uh, people that are communicating with you through your Facebook Messenger. Absolutely. All right. So you got me at software and everybody else that might be sitting in the audience right now is thinking to themselves, or oh, am I going to be fiddling around with code? Am I going to be fiddling around with algorithms at the back there? Um, is it something that any person who's running a business can actually tap into? It's probably one of the easiest pieces of software that I have ever personally used. Um, they have a flow chart in there so you can actually see where things are going. It's almost like if you picture you pick your phone, if you pick your phone up and it's almost as if you're typing your message into that phone, adding images, adding GIFs, and then just putting them in little boxes to send at specific times. And then you're just joining the boxes of what message you want to be sent when and you can add buttons so 
if they click on a button, you can then tell them to go off in one direction. So it's fantastic for segmenting. It is really, really straightforward, Prosper. You don't need to have any coding experience whatsoever. Absolutely. That's also a really good plus if you um, say that they're easy to use. Now, when a business person, maybe like myself, incorporates um, um, you know, a chatbot, do I have to make it sound exactly like me? Because as you know, on the market right now, people are seeking out for authenticity. Are people not going to smell or, you know, discover that this is not Prosper or this is not Sally speaking to them, they're actually speaking to a robot. Won't that turn my customers away? No. Well, it depends how you position yourself with it. We are of the firm belief that you actually upfront at the beginning, tell them that it is a chatbot that's responding to them, that you can personalize it if you want to. For example, our chatbot here at Nudge Marketing is called Pixie. And we introduce her from the get-go in the back end when people actually start to communicate with her. You know, hi, I'm Pixie, I'm Nudge Marketing's chatbot. But then when she's communicating with them and the types of language she uses is the language that we would use within Nudge Marketing when we're speaking to our clients. But they know that it's her rather than us because let's say, for example, they end up typing a question and that she's unable to answer because she's not been programmed to do that they're then going to get some funny response or no response at all. And then as you say, the person reading it's going to go, hang on a sec, you know, these people have pretended that they're talking to me, but it's not them at all. So it's important that you do let people know and are honest from the get go. Good. Then how do I know then as a business person that my customers are going to receive this bot? How many people are actually using, um, you know, services like Messenger in order for them to communicate with the people that they care about, you know, on social media? Okay, I'll answer that question in two parts, if that's okay, Prosper. There's around about 1.3 billion active users on Facebook Messenger every month at the moment. Um, in relation to businesses that are utilizing it, there's around about 5 million businesses that are advertising on Facebook. With um, messenger marketing, only around about 5% of businesses have actually started to utilize this. So there is no better opportunity for businesses to jump in now because as we've seen with other services in the past, like email, for example, you know, it's starting to get um, to a point where the market's saturated. People aren't reading our messages anymore or not reading our emails anymore. Whereas with messages, the open rate and the click-through rate is insanely high. The average click-through rate with Messenger at the moment is, or open rate is 87%. So if you send out 100 messages, 87 of those people are going to actually read that message, which is insane because if you compare that to email, you know, people are lucky to get 10 to 20% these days. So four times the number of people are actually seeing your message from the get-go. Great. So if there is that, so, that much of um, an open rate, which literally means our messages are not going to waste, what sort of uses can we get out of a chatbot? There's various different ways you can utilize a chatbot. You can use it for lead generation. So um, what you want to do, it, the beauty of the chatbot is it's fric frictionless for the user. So they might be scrolling through their news feed or they could be even on your website and there's a little button that says go to messenger and then you can, com can complete that whole um, interaction with them inside your messenger. They don't have to give you their name because you already know it from Facebook. They're not being asked for an email address so they put that in to get your free offer because you can deliver that to them within Messenger. And once they've actually got to consume some of your content and got to know you a little bit better, you can just drop into the conversation, hey, would you like a little bit more information about that? Then you get their email address. So you've got two ways to get in touch with them then. They're used to seeing you on Messenger and they'll keep continuing with you there. You can ask them questions, which gives you the ability to pre-qualify them if you're looking for leads for various parts of your business. So for you, for example, you might pre-qualify people into people that want um, something to do with their website, or you might want people that want something to do with social media. 
And it gives you the ability then to actually speak to them based on what it is they want. So you're not having to speak in a generalized term about getting more leads. You can say, you know, if you're using social media, your clients might be on LinkedIn. So you then, it's like a branch and you can just keep, um, keep going down a branch until you get to that real pointy end and really identify what it is they need. And once they're ready, you can then start putting offers in front of them. Now, there are some Facebook rules and regulations in relation to that. You can't promote to people if they haven't engaged with your chatbot within the last 24 hours. But an engagement simply means that they've pushed a button to say, yes, they want to know more, or they've um, reacted in some other way. So there's lots that you can do once you understand the concept of it and move them through the flow. The other thing it's great for Prosper is customer service. Like, how many times do we get the same question about the same thing over and over and over again? And so what you can do is you can set up keywords. So if people ask um, how much is a delivery or what are your opening hours, you can then program your bot to actually send a message back to say our opening hours are between 8 and 5 Monday to Friday and 8 to 12 on Saturday. So you don't have to actually do that yourself. Your bots actually. So it's taking a heap of the workload off these, you know, the, the things that take a lot of time. Absolutely. Um, while you were talking, I was actually just thinking um, I had to um, upgrade my phone service um, not so long ago. And the lady on the phone kept telling me that my call was important, but they were going to answer um, they were going to get back to me maybe in the next 24 hours or the next 48 hours, but I had yep. to keep hanging on. So oh, yeah, <laughs> I can now imagine if you're, even if you're a small time business person, somebody yep. can just literally go onto your page and instantly start chatting with a bot. And then it can then uh, prompt you to actually get in touch with them, lessening the time of waiting, which I don't think most of our customers have because everything just has to be instant gratification right there so uh, that that's actually a really good point that you've brought up because it is that immediacy you know you do get people that are using their phone maybe late at night because they're scrolling through and you know the bot can speak to them there and then so you're speaking to them when they want to speak to you and giving them the answers they need right there rather than them having to wait for when a human's actually available to speak to them so the, the way I describe a chatbot is it's sort of got the immediacy and the attention of text messages, but it's got the um, behavioral aspects and the prettiness, if you want to call it, of email. So it, it's just a, a match made in heaven. You know, you've got those two things combined and you're giving the customer exactly what they want. So the customer experience just becomes so much more satisfying for them. And when they're happy, and they start to trust you, then they're going to spend more money with you. Absolutely. People do business with those they know, like, and trust. And if you're doing things, you know, that, that are favorable to them and inspiring them and also providing value, like you say, some people are not available during the nine to five, you know, sort of time frame because they're also busy working and fulfilling their uh, needs. And, and if they are scrolling through the internet, you are not up at 12 uh, midnight. So you want to be Correct. available for your customers um, at the particular time that they're searching. Absolutely. Warren Buffett even says this, if you don't have um, any means to actually make money while you're sleeping, then you're going to be working for the rest of your life. So I, I'm really thinking that this is a step in the right direction. Um, but in as much as I would want to be on the side of those people that are sitting on the fence about the chat boards, what if this is just... Um, um, a phase? What if this is just, um, um, you know, uh, something that people are just going to um, talk about and then eventually something bigger, better, faster comes through? Um, what are your predictions about what chatbots look like in the, say, the next, say, two, five years? Because these days we can't do 10 year plans on the internet. Things change no, drastically. No. Yeah. Okay. I'm going to, I'm going to make a really big claim here, Prosper. Um, Messenger marketing is going to be the biggest marketing channel within the next five years and chatbots are what are going to drive that. So the reason I say that are for a few reasons. So if you're happy, I'll just go through that really quickly. Perfect. So we don't have to look 
that far back in history to actually see what it was that happened and the early adopters and how they actually did really well out of these times. Um, Google AdWords was probably the, the beginning of it all, which started back in 2000. And, you know, the people that jumped in and started using Google AdWords initially, um, you know, they were getting penny clicks and their businesses exploded because they were getting traffic. They were, um, you know, they were getting in front of so many people for such a small amount of money. And it was the likes of the businesses that couldn't afford the big billboards on the side of the street or on the side of the bus or the businesses that couldn't afford the TV ads or the radio commercials. And so people started to do really well and internet marketing started to take off. As that got more and more um, mainstream and more and more people started to use it, the cost of the ad started to go up and keywords started to get more expensive in some of the key areas. And so what Google then did is they bought an SEO, so search engine optimization, something you're familiar with, you know, and this is sort of mid 2000s, 2006, 2007. And again, it was the early adopters that did really well out of this. You know, these guys ended up in position one or two on Facebook. And, I'm sorry, on um, Google. Google in the search. <clears throat> and so they were getting free traffic to their site. They weren't even having to pay for this exposure and they were doing really, really well. Um, actually, I've got a really funny joke for you. Where do you hide a dead body? Page two of Google, right there. Ah, yeah, okay, you know that one. All right, gotcha. Um, so then the big daddy came along. Facebook advertising came out in 2012, and that just changed everything because we went from sort of search-based um, marketing to intent-based marketing. So all of a sudden, us as advertisers and business owners had the ability to put our message in front of targeted audiences. You know, these are people that Facebook knew were interested in things that we had to offer, but they may not have even known that they had a problem or they may not have known that they needed our service. And all of a sudden they'll scroll through their newsfeed, see it and go, wow, this is really cool. Click the button and the next thing they're on your website. And again, penny clicks, you know, these guys were, were getting traffic for next to nothing. Unfortunately, business caught up pretty quick with that. And as you can see, the time frame has got shorter and shorter. And um, so the cost to advertise on Facebook now has increased. But the biggest problem is there's no real estate anymore. You know, the Facebook real estate in the newsfeed is completely chock-a-block. And now that Mark Zuckerberg's come out and said that they're going to change the newsfeed and the algorithm... You're still going to have pay to play, but it's not going to be as easy as it was. Now, I'll take a quick breath because I get really excited, as you can possibly tell. <laughs> Absolutely. Yeah. In 2014, um, in 2014, Facebook actually forced us all to go into the Messenger app. And if you, there's a couple of graphs out there and I'll send you some links to these that you can include in your show notes. And what actually happened is they saw a trend where the four major messaging apps actually overtook usage of the social media apps. And Facebook Messenger was one of those. So Mark Zuckerberg is a brilliant businessman. He saw this happening back then and he created the Messenger app. And then in 2016, they opened up the API, which meant that marketers could start to utilize it. And it's been the last sort of 12 to 18 months that companies like ManyChat and ChatFuel have come into it. So if you look at China, they have um, WeChat, which is what um, the Facebook Messenger is very much based on. 80% of, um, of people that actually go and buy something in a shop in China pay for it using WeChat. They book their Uber, they book their restaurant takeout, they book their movie tickets, they basically manage their lives using WeChat and that's where Messenger's going. And that's, that's my prediction for the next five years. So this is the time to jump on the horse and start riding into the future. Absolutely, because once purchases are put out live, especially on the Australian front, Everybody else is going to be making purchases from there. I've also yeah. started noticing something. Um, if somebody pays me through PayPal, or if I make a payment through PayPal, it automatically sends the invoice to my messenger because I think that's where they want to push um, you know, the, the conversation there. 
So I'm yeah. imagining if people like PayPal that have been there since the internet, or if they discovered the internet, if if they are jumping onto this phenomenon, it is something worth um, you know taking you know serious consideration of yeah. and stuff like that. Now, obviously, you've gotten us all excited, um, Nelly, and um, everybody else is probably looking around. Where can I get my own little um, animal to put on my Facebook or little yeah. chatbot? Um, What's the best way that people can actually get a hold of you so that we can um, get this uh, started and uh, maybe get to know more or get started, really? Okay, there's probably a couple of ways. The, um, they can go to our website, which is just nudgemarketing.com, and we've got a, a couple of demo bots on the front page of our website. They'll be able to find those there really easily. We also have a um, group on Facebook called Chat, um, Chatbox Chatter, Bots for Business. And that's just a, a free group that they can join where we'll be posting tips and tricks and different things that you can do to utilize your bot and, and just keep people up to speed with it, really. Um, and then depending on what sort of level they're at and what they want to do, we do also offer courses for those that are more serious about maybe want to take it on and, and move forward with it. It's a great, um, you know, great opportunity for people that are social media managers or that want to set up a little agency and build the bots for people. Um, there's, you know, as I said, the software is actually really easy to use, but it's something else that they have to do. And quite often business owners don't have the time to do those sort of things. They'd rather be out there doing what it is they do best. So um, there is that opportunity as well where, you know, you can actually start to do it for other people. Absolutely. That, that would be a perfect thing that maybe you and me could have a little chat about um, as soon as we get the opportunity. Now, obviously, um, Ellie, we could go on and on and, um, you know, till, <laughs> till the cows come back. But um, I do understand and I can see the passion that you have in this and it's also just rubbed off on us and I do um, you know appreciate the time that you spend with us because like you say if 1.3 billion people are already using messenger it will be stupid not to tap into that audience and um, obviously your customers are already being exposed to this chatbots by other businesses and why not you be part and parcel of it but if it's too um, too many moving parts and if it's too um, fast for you that's the reason why we brought in Ali here from nudge marketing to nudge you a little bit towards making the right decisions for your marketing. Now, it's 2018. It's close to the beginning of the year there, Ellie. What sort of advice can you give to people that are arming and ahhing or sitting on the fence and wondering, should this be the year that I implement a real marketing strategy, especially using Messenger um, chat boards? What sort of um, two, three lines of, or pieces of advice can you give us um, there? Yeah, look, I think um, it's really important for any business. You know, our specialty is actually the lead generation and funnel optimization. So the chatbots fit into that really nicely. Um, it, it's all about the customer experience. You know, Facebook have come out and said they want to start personalizing things. And I think us as consumers, I'll talk as a consumer rather than a business owner, you know, we want that personalized attention again. We want to feel that people are listening to us and we're being heard and that they care enough to, you know, even use our name when they're communicating with us. So rather than you just being, you know, oh, hi there, lovely to meet you. It's hi, Prosper. It's really good to see you again um, and being acknowledged. So businesses um, do need to look at the strategy that they're adopting when they're, when they're interacting with their customers and work out what touch points they can actually change to make sure that they're actually giving their customer and thinking about it, what it is their customer needs. So from a marketing perspective, I'd suggest that they actually take a step back, put themselves in their customer's shoes and actually look at how they're, how they're dealing with them. And then just making sure that there is little touches all the way along and that they're offering value consistently. It's about value adding at every single touch point because the more value we give and the more we're prepared to give of ourselves and the more authentic we are, then the more likely people are going to be to actually come and want to do business with you and then refer you on because that's what it's all about. You know, business is about being remembered and, and telling your friends that you had a really good experience with someone so they then will come and use you as well. 
Absolutely. Well, just uh, taking off from where you left, I think it was Jim Ron that mentioned that you are paid in direct proportion to the value you can bring into the marketplace, but you can only do so much as a person. Let the chatbot, yeah. you know, uh, double you up or duplicate your efforts in actually putting value out there. And like what, um, you know, Elliot said a little bit earlier on, Messenger is going to be one of the biggest marketing channels in the next five years. So you will be using Messenger for purchases, buying your air tickets, you know, customer service here and there. And like I mentioned as well, big companies like PayPal are already pushing people towards their, um, you know, chat boards so that they can distribute content there. And it's what is called permission marketing because somebody has given you the permission to sell to them and you now get their attention. So why not now? Why not you? Why not a chat board? Thank you so much, Ellie, for your time, um, you know, um, and expertise. And if you've been watching this show and you really, really got excited, jump onto um, Ellie's uh, website, which I'm going to be putting the, in the show notes over there and test out the bots that are on her website and see if it is something that your uh, business can benefit from. Because as you know, we really want your business to be profitable and enjoyable. Have a good day.